Well, hello everybody. It's me again. And today I'm going to actually demonstrate a workout that you can do at home with just a broomstick. Normally we use this bad boy to clean, but today we're going to use it to break a sweat. I love being creative and finding just everyday things that we use or just using my own body weight to get a great workout in and to break a sweat. You don't need expensive equipment and you don't need a gym membership. Although those things do help, you don't need them to really sculpt and tone your body, build muscle and lose weight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through a warm up first and talk about the different moves we're gonna do in the warm up. I'm going to go through those one by one and then I'm gonna demo it through completely so you can see what the warm up looks like. Then after that, I'm gonna demonstrate the type of moves that you're gonna do with a broomstick go through those and then do a complete run through with that. So you can actually do this on your own. And of course, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave a comment below or you can contact me on my email or my uh, Facebook or Instagram. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm gonna step back just so you guys can completely see me. Uh, it, I'm gonna try my hardest to talk as loud as I can so you can hear me. But um, yeah, I just want to make sure that you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, so the first move we're going to do is a high knee move. A lot of times I see people do the high knees wrong. They bring their knees up just a little bit. And you really want to make sure that if you want to reach the cardiovascular state, that you're bringing your knees as high as possible and you're driving your knees up towards the ceiling. So it should look like this when you're actually doing the move. You want to make sure that your feet are dorsiflexed and that your legs, when they're going up, are at 90 degree angles. You also want to make sure that you're moving your arms with your legs as well and to breathe. Don't hold your breath when you're doing this move. So the move actually looks like this. We're going to do that for 20 seconds, okay? Once you're done with that move, you're then going to go into pop squat crossovers. What that means is you're going to take your right hand and you're going to cross it over and touch your left foot as you're popping down into your squat. And then as you're coming back up, you're going to do the same. The left hand will touch the right foot. So in slow motion, it looks like this. Come down, up, down up down up faster it looks like this okay touch that foot feet together just like that try not to have your chest point towards the ground try to keep your chest up as much as possible also make sure that you're not popping your butt up that your butt stays as low as possible you're going to do that for 20 seconds once that's done you're going to go right in to butt kicks. What I like to tell my clients is, if you're not capable of bringing your heel to your glute, then put your hand on your glute and try to bring your heel up to touch the back of your hand. So that move looks like this. Do not release your hand from your glute. Okay, the idea is to drive that heel towards the palm of your hand. You're gonna do that for 20 seconds. And then finally, we're gonna go into no contact burpees. No contact burpees looks just like this. I'm gonna demonstrate it in slow motion. You're gonna come down, your feet will pop back, your feet will pop back forward, and you'll come up. There is no jump, and you don't have to bring your hands over your head. If you cannot do that due to an injury or because you may not be strong in your lower body yet. Then you can do the modified version, which looks like this. Hands down, one leg back, the other leg follows, bring that leg forward, followed by the other leg, and pop back up. That too is a modified no contact burpee. So the move looks just like this. Just like that. You're gonna do that for 20 seconds. So you're gonna go through all of those moves, 20 seconds each, three times. 
So three rounds, each move is 20 seconds, back to back, no rest if you can help it, okay? If you need rest, take no more than a 20 to 30 second rest because we want to keep our heart rate up and this is our warm up. So it's allowing us to warm our bodies up, to work those fast twitch and slow twitch muscles. So when we're ready to do our actual workout, we're actually gonna go right into it and we're warmed up and ready to go. So I'm gonna demo what everything looks like as a complete run through. So high knees, we're gonna go with our crossover pop squats. We're gonna go with butt kicks and no contact burpees. So here we go. No contact groupies. Ten. Five. And time. So make sure if you need a break after that last one, that you take anywhere from 20 to 30 seconds and then start it again. You're gonna do that for three complete rounds and that'll be your warm up. Now we're gonna get started with the actual workout. Okay, before we start, get a drink if you need to, uh, a towel if you need to wipe your sweat, if you need to open up a window or a door, do that as well. So for today, all you're gonna need is a nice broomstick, okay? For this move, we're gonna do a couple of different things. You wanna make sure that when you're performing these moves that you're focusing on form. Form is very, very important. I can't stress that enough. If the form is not correct, do not do the move. I'd rather people either not do the move or do a modified version than do the move and be doing it incorrectly. You may not be training the right muscles properly and you're more prone to injury if you do not train correctly. So make sure that you are absolutely doing the form and each movement correctly. The first move we're gonna do is just a regular shoulder press, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a full rep shoulder press and then a half rep. What this does, it not only builds the roundness of your shoulders, but it's also helping to sculpt the rear delts and the front part of your shoulder as well. I like nice rounded shoulders. So we wanna make sure that the, we're developing our shoulders properly. We're gonna do that into a high pull, okay? So the move's gonna look like this. You're gonna go palms facing forward, full rep, make sure to extend your arms all the way through, make sure that head is coming through your arms, come back down, and then a half rep. So literally maybe right above your head, not any more than that, just, just right above your forehead, back down. Full rep, half rep, full rep, half rep full rep and half rep. Once you're done with that, you're gonna go right into high pulls, okay? I like to lean slightly forward to really make sure that I'm activating my rear delt. If you can do it straight, great, that's awesome. Just make sure your elbows are pointed towards the ceiling and not 
out or down towards the ground. That way you're actually working your root delts and you're preventing injury to your, your, your elbows. So slightly bent, come up just like that. See how my elbows are pointing towards the ceiling and I'm making sure I'm using my mind and the muscle that I'm training to move only that muscle. So that mind muscle connection. So because this is a rear delt move, I'm making sure that my rear delts are doing all of the work. Okay. Just like that. So we're going to do one full rep and one half rep for 10. And then you're going to go right into 15 rear delt high pulls with the broom. Okay. Once that is done, you're going to go into bringing the bent, the broom behind you. You're going to go into pop squats. Okay. So we're going to do 10 pop squats followed by a reverse lunge. Okay. Just like that. We're going to do 10 on the left and 10 on the right. We want to make sure that our form is right. So when you're coming back into that lunge, your knee that's forward should not go past your toes. Keep your knee behind your toe and that front leg should be at 90 degrees and your back leg should also be at 90 degrees. Make sure your chest is up, you're squeezing your core and you're breathing in as you're going down into the lunge and breathing out as you're popping back up from the lunge. So it's going to look just like this. And what I like to do is when I'm bringing my right leg forward, I don't put my whole foot down because what that does is you lose the tension of the move. So make sure that when you're bringing that foot forward, just tap it with your toe. That way you're keeping tension in your leg and you're training those muscles properly. Just like that. Okay. So without further ado, I'm going to get started with everything I talked about with the shoulder presses, the rear delt high pulls, the pop squats, and the reverse lunges. If you need to break in between, that is completely okay. I'd rather you do these moves correctly than rush the moves. Let's get started. Here we go. 